What is up my crafty friends? My name is Carrie and welcome back to my channel. I can't wait to share today's video with you because y'all I'm teaming up with my girl Keisha over at Sweet Urban Rose and we're bringing you a bee themed collaboration. Now we both challenged each other to sort of use what we had laying around the house and sort of craft from our stash, our Dollar Tree stash. And I can't wait to share with you what we have come up with. We both really stretch our imaginations and I hope this inspires you to do the same. Now if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on all those notifications. That way you don't miss anything that I've got coming your way. Now yesterday was a spontaneous upload for a live. So when you've got those notifications turned on, you're going to get that notification whenever I go live or whenever I've got a premiere that is happening. So keep watching if you want to find out what we make for this collab. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to be using for this first project today. Now these did come from Dollar Tree and they were left over from my Easter stash. Now I don't know about y'all, but I totally had a ton of Easter stuff that I never got around to using because of the whole coronavirus thing. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna totally figure out how I can repurpose some of this Easter stuff into spring or everyday stuff that I can use. That way it doesn't go to waste and I don't have to wait a whole year until I start working with it. So I had this chick and bunny left over and these came in a whole package like this and I'm only going to need one of each for this project and you are not going to believe your eyes when I show you what we're going to turn this into. Now also picked up these from Dollar Tree and I'm going to need one of these little styrofoam eggs. We're going to totally be painting this something else so the color does not matter so don't worry about that. Okay so let's do the easy part first. We just want to take an X-Acto knife and we want to cut one of these little glitter Easter eggs in half. Now just be super careful. My blade is not tight. So just be super careful whenever you're working with your X-Acto knife while you're cutting. The foam does cut pretty easy, but yeah, just be careful. So now we're just going to lay both pieces of this to the side because we're not ready for that just yet. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is to grab a pair of wire cutters. Now, you might find that you can cut this an easier way, but I happen to have the wire cutters and it worked perfect for me for this. So if you think you have a different way to do it, then by all means go for it. But the wire cutters worked out good for me. This actually cuts pretty easy. Now if you've got a Dremel tool that might work too. I'm not 100% sure about that. But we're just going to start cutting off the pieces that we don't need. So I'm going to cut off his little haircut here. I'm also going to cut off his little beak. I know y'all are probably wondering what in heaven's name I am up to. We're just going to cut off his feet, too. Poor little chicken. Our poor little chick. He has no beak, he has no hair, and he has no feet. But he does have a body. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is to cut our rabbit. And our rabbit isn't going to need quite as much surgery. We just want to cut off his ears. And this is the only piece we're going to be using, but I'm not throwing this away because I'm pretty sure I'll come up with something else to do for him. So just hang on to this. Okay, so we don't have to sand this part because we're not going to see the part that we cut. But I am going to take some of my sandpaper and just smooth out the edges. Okay, have you guessed what we're going to make yet? Probably not. Okay, so I'm going to move my sandpaper out of the way. So now we're ready to start putting it all together. So, 
These are the three pieces that I'm going to be using for our project. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our little chicken. Oh, wait, we've got a little more prep work to do. My bad. I got ahead of myself. So I want to fill in these holes. The way I'm going to do that is with my glue gun. I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue in here. And now our hole is filled in. So we'll do the same thing with our little bunny ear. We'll give this just a second to cool off. And then I'll rub that with my sandpaper. Okay, now when we paint this, you won't even be able to tell that there was a hole in here. Okay, so now we're ready to put everything together. So these are the three pieces that I'm going to be using. My half of my Easter egg, my bunny ears, and my chicken bottom. Chicken bottom. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we want to do is to put a little bit of hot glue on our little bunny ear here. And the way that we want to glue this on is we're going to flip our little chicken upside down. I want to go glue this to the humpback part. The next thing we want to do is to take our little Easter egg here. We're going to put a little glue right on this. We're going to glue our Easter egg to our chicken head. And this is what you should end up with. Okay, so now we want to take some wire, and this is just some floral wire that I've had laying around the house. You can just pick up any wire. Dollar Tree actually sells wire too. And we're only going to need just a little piece here. So I'm going to cut off maybe about a four inch piece. And we're going to fold it into a V. Can you see that? Just fold it just like that into a V. And the next thing we want to do is to just curl the ends just a little bit. Now I want my end to curl around just a little bit more, so I'll just take my wire cutters and make that curve around just like that. Can you see? Okay, this probably just gave away what we're making, didn't it? Okay, so now we want to add a little bit of hot glue to our wire. We want to attach that right to the back. Can you see it? Do you know what we're making yet? If not, stick around because once we start putting the paint down, you're totally going to recognize it right off. Okay, so now it's time to paint. And today I'm going to be using Waverly chalk paint in a black, I'm not sure what the color of this is, oh, ink. So I'm going to be using ink, I'm going to be using maize, and I'm going to be using plaster. This is going to be my color palette today. So I want to start off with the maize color first. And I'll be honest, my maize color <laughs> was a little bit dried out, so I added a little bit of water to it. So I'm really hoping that it's going to work like it usually does. So let's just lay some of this maize color on the body. Pretty sure I've given it away by this. Have you figured out what we're making yet? Okay. 
I am going ahead and painting the sides because that's going to show. So I want to make sure that all of that's covered. Okay, now we're done with this color, so we can just put this up. So I'm going to give that just a second to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to use my ink. Now for this one, I am using sort of a rounded brush. So I'm just going to pick it up because it may be easier to paint this way. We're going to paint our little Easter egg first. I'm not going all the way to the edge of my yellow yet because it is still a little bit wet. So I'm just going to get as close as I can. Y'all know I hate waiting for paint to dry, so. We'll just do what we can paint and then we'll go back and do what the next part. Okay, so I think our yellow is dried enough. I don't care that it's not dried all the way because we're going to blend in our black to our yellow. So if you haven't guessed it yet, we're actually painting a little bee right now. And he is just the cutest thing you've ever seen. So I'm going to take my brush and I've got my black paint on it. And I'm just going to put some paint and then bring it in and lift it up. And that's going to blend in our black with our yellow. I want my bee to look sort of fuzzy, just like a real bee. Because I want this to look sort of rounded off, I'm gonna bring and sort of make this rounded. Now our bee looks like he's fluffy. Isn't that cute? So now I want to go paint my little stinger. We're going to do that the same way. Get our black on the very end. Just like that. So now I want to do two more little stripes here. And I want those stripes to be thicker up here at the top and then to get thinner as it goes down. So I'm going to start off just by making one stripe and then another. But watch how we're going to feather these out. So easy. So we'll start in the middle. And then we'll pull to the other side. That line is just our center point, so we know that's kind of where we need to stay. Okay, while our little bee is drying, I'm just going to move him out of the way over here. And I'm going to start on the next part of this project. So I've got one of these Happy Easter signs from the Dollar Tree. And this did not get used at Easter, so it's about to get used right now. So the first thing I want to do is to take off this little tag.
and you can sand the front or paint the front, but honestly, you're not going to see this, so I'm just going to flip it over, and I'm going to give the back side a coat of paint with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Okay, I'm going to give this first coat time to dry and then assess it and see if it needs a second coat. And if it does, I'll put that second coat on and then we'll be back to paint the wings of our little bee here. Okay, so I did have to end up putting two coats of paint on my sign here. And while I was at it, I went ahead and put one coat of paint on my bee's wings. And then we'll come back and detail those wings in just a little bit. But in the meantime, I want to move on to the next step. So for this next part, we're gonna be using some toilet paper rolls. I know y'all probably have a ton of these laying around your house <laughs> because everybody is like thinking this is liquid gold and they're hoarding everything. So I'm gonna use two toilet paper rolls here and you can get really technical and you can measure it out or you can do like I do and you can just eyeball it. But if you're super OCD, you might want to grab your ruler and make sure that everything is nice and even. <laughs> but that is not me. So I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to start off by flattening down one of my toilet paper rolls. I'm going to use the back of my scissors to make sure it's super flat. And like I said, if you're really wanting to make sure everything is even, you can make sure, you can take your ruler and you can divide this out into three separate pieces, but I'm not going to do that because my brain hates math. So I'm just going to sort of eyeball it. Into what I think is thirds. And it's not that big a deal if it's not perfect. I totally lost you yet. Do you realize what we're making with these? Okay, so let's flatten it back out. And now we're going to cut these. I'm going to roughly cut them maybe three quarters of an inch thick. And again, don't worry about it being perfect. If you've got some that are skinny and some of them that are fat, that is totally okay too. So I'm going to repeat the process with my second toilet paper roll, and then we'll be back to put this part together. Okay, so now we've got all of these crazy looking toilet paper rolls. So the reason that we folded them in half or into six like we did is because we're going to make a honeycomb. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to just start off by randomly gluing some of my sides together. And it's going to look a little crazy until you get some of it put together. But I promise you it comes together. And remember I told you don't worry if your pieces are not exactly the same size because in a real honeycomb it's not perfect or at least I don't think it is. Okay so now we're going to grab another one. We're just going to slide that underneath it. See, I told you it starts coming together. So just keep on putting this together until you get it the size and the shape that you want it to be. And it's totally up to you how big you want your, your pieces to be. Okay, so now that I've got my honeycomb, the shape that I want it to be, 
I'm going to go back in and fill in some of these holes. So I'll just take my glue gun here. And this will really help to clean up the edges, make everything come together. And if you get some hot glue on your edge, don't worry about it because I'm actually going to be painting or adding in some honey. And that'll just be one less thing that we have to do. See how much cleaner that looks. So now we'll just fill in all of these holes. Okay, now that this part of the project is done, I am going to paint this. And I'm, I've decided to paint my honeycomb black because once it goes on my white sign, I really want it to pop. So I think painting it black is gonna be the perfect choice. So I'm gonna get this painted black and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put everything together. Okay, so I went ahead and used my Waverly chalk paint because I did not have black spray paint. And I will be honest, it is quite messy. So if you've got spray paint, that would definitely save you a lot of time and a lot of mess, but I did not and I was using what I had on hand, so here we have the mess, but it's okay. All right, so now I wanna add in a little bit of detail on my bee's wings. I'm just gonna take a little flat brush and use the same ink paint from Waverly. And this step is totally optional. If you decide you want your bee to have plain wings, then you can definitely leave him plain. But I kind of like the way it looks with the details. So I'm gonna lay my paintbrush to the side and just ever so slightly outline the edge of that wing. And there we go, now our little bee is done. So I'm gonna give everything a few more minutes to dry and then we're gonna be ready to assemble our sign. Okay, so all of our pieces are dried. This is gonna be so cute when it's put together. I can't wait to show you. Now, I'm also gonna finish this off with a little bit of buffalo check ribbon. This is quarter inch buffalo ribbon, and I got it from Amazon. It was super cheap. I've got a whole roll of it over here. And I'm also going to use a little saying that I printed off on my silhouette. If you have a silhouette and you want to replicate this sign, I will include a link to the SVG file down below. So be sure to check the description box if you want to download that. Now, if you don't own a silhouette and you want to still make this sign, I will have this for sale in my shop and I'll put that link down below. Or if you just want to paint your sign, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube that show you how to transfer and you know how to transfer words using just a printer and some paint. So that's totally doable. But I just opted for this super, super simple, man, I can't talk today. This super simple font, and I don't remember what it's called. So let's go ahead and glue everything down because I cannot wait to see this finished. Okay, so I'm gonna start first with my honeycomb. And I've got the holes here on the sides from where the sign was because remember it used to hang like this and I'm turning it, it used to hang vertical and I want it to go horizontal. So I've got these holes here. So I'm going to strategically position my honeycomb to cover up one of the holes. So I'll just use a little hot glue on the back of my honeycomb. honestly didn't think to put an extra little layer. I've got some feet here. We might need that because this is going to be a different layer. So it's a good thing I saved that. C. 
so stinking cute. Okay, so now let's put our words on. Oh my goodness, look how precious that is. Now I do want to make a little track here that my bee looks like it's been flying. So I'm gonna use my Arteza acrylic markers today because these are phenomenal. Mm, let's see where I want it to go. Let's. cute. So the only thing I need to do is to flip it over and put my buffalo ribbon on the back and this little project is done. Okay, let's see what she looks like. Oh my goodness. Look how precious. I cannot wait to get this hung up. So for this part, I'm gonna be using my Sherbonder glitter sticks and I'm gonna pull the gold ones out because I'm not sure if that gold is gonna clash with the gold that's in my bee or not. But if it's not, then that may look kinda of cool to have the gold honey dripping down. So I've just loaded it into my Sherbonder glue gun here. And now let's just go for it. Let's see what this is going to look like. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge here and just let it drip. Let's see what that looks like. May have been a little too much. I didn't want it to quite drip that much. Okay, I'm gonna let my honey dry for a little bit. And if I don't like the way it looks after it's dried, I'm gonna go back in and paint it the same color as my yellow, just so that everything matches. Okay, so for the next project, I've got this little dice here, and y'all have all seen the dice from the Dollar Tree. They look like this. And I transformed these two dice into this adorable little bee-themed accessory to set around the house. Let me show you how easy this was. So the very first thing that I did was to coat both of my dice with two coats of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. This chalk paint covered this orange so well, I was really shocked at how nicely this did. Now, when I painted my dice, I painted one coat going one way, I let it dry completely, and then I took and painted another coat going the opposite way. That way my brush marks were going in opposite directions so that it kind of has like a linen look. Now, on this one, I actually blow dried it with my blow dryer, and it kind of gave some really cool little crackle finish to it. So that's totally up to you if you want to speed up the process. You can blow dry that with the blow dryer. Just know that if you do, you will get those crackles. So if you'll look at this dice, it's not, I didn't just glue the paper to the top of it. It's very smooth. There's no lines or anything. I actually did a transfer with this. I used regular printer paper and just a regular inkjet printer. And I pulled a bunch of designs off of the internet. I knew that I wanted some everything to be black and white, but I wanted some bee themes, but I also wanted just some solid color patterns. I'd seen something similar on Etsy and it turned out super, super cute. And I thought that's a great dupe for these dice because I haven't seen anyone do that at all. 
If you want to make your own dice, I will put a link down below to all of the images that I used. It's all on one sheet of paper, and they're all going to be sized to the perfect size that I used for my die. So if you want to make your set, you don't have to resize anything. Just print off that download, and you're good to go. Now, I've got some with like a little beehive, and then I've got a little honeycomb, and then I've got a couple of different kinds of buffalo plaid, and then I've got just a, a plain bee here, and then I've got another honeycomb. And I thought this one was really cool too. It's like a ground bee. Anyway, okay, so the first thing you want to do after you've got your paint dry, I did let this dry, like I said, for a good long time. You want to make sure it's nice and dry. You want your paint to be matte finished. That's why I decided to use a chalk paint. Then I'm going to go in with some matte Mod Podge and I'm going to paint a generous layer on each side of my dice. I'm just going to do one side at a time, and the way that I decided to do my pattern is I'm going to have it three sides with a pattern, and then I'm going to have it three sides with a picture. So we'll paint our layer of Mod Podge. And then we'll just take our transfer, or our printed off image here, because it's not a transfer yet. We'll just lay that upside down in the center. Now, I decided not to make my image go over the edge, but if you want your images to roll over to that edge, just make sure you put your Mod Podge on the bottom of it, or every, every place that you want it to cover. I just want mine to be on the flat part, I'm going to make sure there's no air bubbles whatsoever in your picture. Okay, let's flip it over. I need the next little. Let's go ahead and glue our next little picture on. And I've gone ahead and done three sides already because I wanted to show you what the next step is without having to wait overnight for it to dry. Now these did dry probably eight hours before I'm starting to wash it off. So you've got to make sure that it's super, super dry. Don't do it too early or the process will not work. I'm just going to grab a little piece of construction paper here. That way I don't make a mess on anything. You want to make sure you use clean water for this. And you can run this under the sink, but I, my craft room is not near the sink. So I'm just going to use this water. So the first thing I want to do is to just saturate the image with water. You want the water to really soak in to this image. If you want to go ahead and do the other sides, you can. I'm just got to make sure that I'm doing the one that is dry and not the one that I just painted. I think this is it. I'll know in a minute. Yeah, this is it. Of course, when you do yours, your entire dice will be dried, so you won't have to worry about that. So now I'm just going to take my finger and very lightly rub. You'll see the top layer of your paper start rolling off and just keep working that. Don't rub too hard or you're going to completely rub it off. I really liked this look because I kind of wanted it to have like an antiqued or aged look. And I was afraid if I just glued my 
paper down to the dice, then that would totally wreck the look that I was going for. So that's why I opted to do this way. It does take a little bit longer versus just Mod Podge in your page over the top of your dice, but I think the look is so much cooler and cleaner. And I don't want my edges to be super straight, so I'm just gonna take my finger and very lightly just buff that edge. Now when this is wet, it will look a little bit like it's all off. So you're gonna need to let it dry to make sure that all of your paper, the top layer of that paper is gone. So even though it's wet and it looks like it's all gone, just let it dry and if you have to go back over it again with your water and rub with your finger, you might just know you might have to do that. Just don't rub too hard or you will totally rub your transfer off. But I just love this look. Sort of a weathered and aged look. Okay, how cool is that? So now let's flip it over and let's do this one. Okay, so I've got all of the top layer off of my dice here. And now I'm gonna go back with some of my Waverly chalk paint in it's, this is actually a wax. It's not a chalk paint. It's a water-based wax, and I really like the color of this because it's not like a really dark, dark brown. It's sort of just a nice antiquing brown. So I just want to take a small round brush, and I want to brush a little bit on the edges here. Then I want to take my finger and just sort of rub it in. I don't want a lot of this. I just want a little bit. And I really like the way it looks whenever I buff it off with my finger. Okay. That's got a little bit of antiquing on our whole dice here. Now the very last thing that we're gonna need to do, and then this is done, is seal this with a coat of our matte Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna use my big brush and put a thin coat on it and let that dry. And then it's gonna look like this. Aren't they super cute? Okay, so for the next project, it's probably pretty obvious what this is gonna be, but I could not help myself because I've been dying to make one of these, and this is the perfect opportunity. So I've got this rope here, and this is rope that I had already in my stash from a previous project. This actual rope did not come from the Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree does sell the nautical rope in the packages, so you can totally do this with just Dollar Tree items. So I've got all of this rope here, and I've gone ahead and cut a smaller piece, and I've straightened it. So what I did was wet it, because when you unravel it, it's kind of wavy and wonky like this, and I wanted my piece to be straight for my hanger. So I just wet it and blow dried it, and gave it a nice blowout so that it's straight instead of wavy. You wavy girl. The wavy girls with the curly hair know what I'm talking about. You've got to straighten this. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is just take off my tag. Now this was left over from Easter, obviously. But they do sell the styrofoam egg shape at Michael's where I've seen a lot of people use flower pots, but you can totally do this with any kind of cone-shaped thing you can find. So I'm just gonna start by gluing my rope down. And I'm not gonna put a ton of glue on this. 
but I do want to put enough so that it stays. Okay, now that I'm almost to the top, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my loop. My loop is roughly maybe eight inches long. I'm just gonna poke a hole in my styrofoam. glue in there. Very carefully stick this in. I don't want to burn my fingers. Now we'll just finish gluing the rest of the rope all the way to the top. How simple was that? So now I've just got a piece of round construction paper that I've cut to the size of a circle. And this might be a little bit too big, so let me trim this down a little bit. I don't want a huge hole because my hive is kind of small. going to use a little hot glue to seal the edge of this rope because it is getting a little wonky there. And I'll do this in the same way. sure this is gonna that looks like it's gonna be the perfect size now I'm just gonna put a little drop of hot glue there glue my construction paper down on. Now I am positioning my rope so that my hot glue is down at the bottom where my seam is because I've got a little plan for that. You won't even notice all of this hot glue whenever I'm done. So I'll give this just a second to cool. Now I'm going to take out this hot glue stick. And I'm going to replace it with one of the gold Sherbonder hot glue sticks. I'll get rid of the little bit of clear that's in my gun. And that pretty gold looks just like honey. I'm just going to put a little hot glue on the edges just like we did with the sign. I'm gonna let it run down. Okay, what do you think? I've got one last little detail that I wanna add, and this is just a little bow that I picked up on the Christmas clearance aisle at Walmart. 
and I love the buffalo pattern. It's uh, absolutely adorable and totally screams farmhouse. These were meant to be used on the little miniature Christmas trees, but as soon as I saw them, I knew I had to pick them up. So I picked up several of these, but how cute is that? I mean, it's just the perfect little detail to add to our little beehive, don't you think? So give me just a second to get all of the vignettes set up and I'll be back to give you the big reveal. Okay, y'all, here it is hanging up in the little corner of my living room and I absolutely love it. It is so freaking cute. And just what this little corner needs to brighten it up for spring and summer. Which part is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. I honestly can't pick a favorite, but I really do think I love the dice. I think they're just so, so adorable. That does it for today's video, y'all. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And until next time, happy DIYing, y'all.